morning. I'm behind the gavel with Jason today. We're going to be talking about our first auction post-corona or during corona, uh, our first rack auction, and a couple of other things I'm uh, as well. Let me go and share this on my page real quick. My name is Jason Roski. I'm the owner of the auctioneer at the I'm the owner of the Casey Auction Company. We don't actually call auctions anymore. It's all online. Um, we had a really exciting week. I tell you, it's been a crazy couple of months here, uh, as it has been everywhere else. But we were just able to, uh, we were scheduled to have the auction that closed this Monday actually close almost a month ago. Uh, as we were getting ready to load it the first time, the, uh, the news of coronavirus started to spread. Uh, and shortly thereafter, uh, stay at home orders were put into effect and we, nobody was sure what that looked like. Our clients were ex obviously extremely concerned, as were we, as to how the, you know, our buyers and the neighbors going to react to it. After watching the markets for a couple of weeks, after watching the auction markets, after watching people in general for a couple of weeks, we decided with consultation with our clients that it was time to go ahead and list it. We had a lot of parameters in place. Um, we, we monitor our auctions on a daily basis here, looking for how many bidders we're getting, how many lot views, how many uh, bids have been placed, uh, emails we get, inquiries we get, all that kind of stuff, response for emails that we send out. Uh, engagement with our posts here on Facebook and Instagram. We look at all of those factors on a daily basis. And having those historical numbers in mind uh, and talking to our client, we say, if we hit these benchmarks, we will continue to have the auction online. Well, from the from immediately, it was, it was obvious that people were excited about having an auction to look at. Uh, our, our opening surge of bidders was 30 to 50% larger than expected by day six. Uh, lot views were higher, bids were higher than historically has been the case. And so with that information, our clients felt comfortable going forward, and so did we. Uh, we checked in after the first week because it was online for two and a half weeks. Um, we checked in, uh, checked in with them a couple of different times with updates on what was happening, and they felt comfortable with the numbers, as did we. If we'd felt if there was a uh, abnormal spike down, we'd have definitely considered stopping the auction, but that was never the case. We had good consistent growth after the initial surge, and then at the end of the auction, we had the same kind of growth that we normally see. Um, just to give you an idea, there were bidders from over 30 states and two countries. There were 68,000 lot views, 3,500 bids almost, and over 300 bidders. Those aren't huge, huge numbers, but the auction was only 269 lots, actually 265 product. Because uh, we have some information posts, uh, lots, and the video post. Uh, the videos I shot here last week, we uh, share in that catalog so people who are looking there can see it as well. So, but those numbers actually beat our historic metrics. So we look at the last 20 auctions, took the average at the end of how many registered bidders, how many lots did we sell, how many bids did we receive, all of those kind of factors, divided it by the total and found out our you know, we, we can figure out our average bidders per lot in an auction, which is 0.9856, something like that. It's just under a person per lot. Uh, in this auction, we have more than a person a lot. We generally have uh, uh, about 200 lot views per, 230 lot views per item in an auction. We exceeded that. Um, we exceeded number of bids. We exceeded all these things. It wasn't a huge money auction. It was a good auction. It was a solid auction, uh, but it just shows the market is definitely absorbing and, and buying right now online, which we expected. We 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 suspected it anyway, and I expected it after talking to colleagues around the country that that was going to be the case. And if you have any questions while you're watching, just go ahead and ask them. You'll post a comment below. I'll ask them as best I can while we're going along. Uh, but the long and short of it is the actual auction itself was really successful. A lot of our regular buyers said the prices seemed as strong, if not stronger than normal for the kinds of assets we were selling. And so we were excited about that. Uh, our client seemed, was happy with the results as well. And uh, we have two more two more auctions plus coming from that estate. So we'll be continuing working on that going forward. Pickup was interesting. Uh, you saw last week, if you follow our page, the, the steps we took to ensure a safe, uh, pickup environment. And for the most part, people were very respectful of that. We had a few people who just knocked on the door. Um, one of them asked me for a job, and I almost said, if you can't follow the, email, the instructions in an email on our Facebook and on the auction, 
probably not going to give you a job because you can't follow simple instructions. But we did have, a, you know, the vast majority of people signed up and signed up Genius. Uh, when they got here, they texted me, told me they were the front door, the back door, their name, all the information that I needed. Uh, we were able to get the items organized before they got here. So when somebody texted me, usually within two or three minutes, and usually within a minute, in a minute and a half, two minutes, I was walking out of the building with at least some of their purchase headed to their vehicle. Very efficient. We'll be, I mean, we we'd started using Sign of Genius and scheduling appointments to begin with, but I really like the efficiency of the way we just did that. Uh, uh, it's something I want to look at doing something else similar to it going forward. Um, you know, letting us know you're here, and we'll just bring it out. It just made it really, really efficient and, and fast. And people were in and out quickly. We talked, you know, most of us haven't really had much social interaction for the last couple of weeks, last few weeks, last month or more. And so there was discussion from, you know, safe distance. I was wearing a mask. Um, but yeah, it was, it worked out really, really well. Uh, we, we didn't expect, so we had a lot of people buying one or two items, which is not uncommon, but it seemed like it was even more so this time. So we have to actually add pickup on Monday, which is almost filled up as well, completely filled up to Wednesday and Thursday. And so next Monday we'll have pickup again to finish up that. UPS is coming today to get the rest of the things to be shipped out. So if you're watching this live and you haven't told us you need something shipped, let us know quickly uh, or it will be here till next week at some point. Um, had our first rack auction, which is a remote auction, Rowan Associates of, K of KC Auctions. Uh, we're, we're, is a new tool we're implementing, allowing people to sell on our platform from their location. Meant mainly for a lot of antique dealers that we know. We've I've been in the antique industry for, oh my goodness, 30 plus years. A lot of these people who I sell for regularly or sell to regularly, I've known for 20, 20, 10, 15, 20 years and more. And all of my antique dealer friends are in a really hard spot right now. Obviously, there's no shows. If they have a shop, there's not, they can't open their shop. If they're an antique mall, they're not... Some antique malls doing like daily walkthroughs with curbside pickup, but that's very limited, obviously. Um, eBay is an option they're all using, and they all have their websites. But we want to give them another opportunity to bring market, bring merchandise to the marketplace. Did a really small test auction close last night. The numbers were pretty good. We had uh, 37 bidders for 21 lots. Again, one bidder and a half per lot. That's an amazing number. Had great lot views. Okay, bid count. Um, it was a smaller auction, nothing spectacular in it, uh, and that showed up in the bid count. But it definitely drew a lot of attention, and we're excited about the process going forward. It was also a way for us to test it on a small level before we start opening up. We have two people working on these right now that will be listing in the next week or so auctions of 150 or 200 lots that will be around the Kansas City area, people we know, but their items we're not going to see in person. So. Uh, excited about that coming forward uh, and still learning the logistics of that and how it's going to work. So, again, that's a pretty exciting deal for us going forward. Uh, Symphony of the Flint Hills. Uh, for those of you in Kansas City area, you know what the Symphony of the Flint Hills is. For those of you not, it's an, it's an annual event. And the Kansas City Symphony packs up all of their equipment, all of their instruments, and heads out into the Flint Hills and performs a concert. There's an organization that has been established many, many years ago to promote the Tallgrass Prairie Preserve and the importance of that. Uh, the, one of the two largest Tallgrass Prairies in the world remains in this area. Uh, the other is, I think, in Africa. And it's such a vital thing for all types of reasons, but it's an amazing thing. And if you're, if you're local here and you've been out there, you, 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 can, you understand what I'm talking about. There is there is a, a peacefulness to it and a calmness to it and a rejuvenation to it. Stacy and I have been fans of it for a, close to a decade now. I think we've been to nine or 10 of them in a row. Last year was canceled because of a terrible microburst the night before that destroyed the stage and the tents. Uh, this year's obviously has been canceled. Part of that event every year is an art auction where they feature and highlight local artists who are painting in Kansas. And uh, several years ago, we got involved with that. Um, they had a, there was an event years, several years ago that was extremely windy and they couldn't display the art. And so they couldn't do the art auction on site. And so we contacted them and offered our services to put their auction online. And it worked out well. We've done things with them in the past to promote the event. 
And this year they decided, we actually decided this long before the event was canceled to put the art auction online, calling, hauling out 50 pieces of artwork in the middle of a prairie um, is more than a notion and it's really challenging and obviously it's a huge risk to the artwork uh, and the volunteering is needed for just the, the art tent is, is pretty in intensive as well and so we uh we they contacted us last year and we decided we're going to go ahead and put the entire auction online that is going live next monday it'll be online for about a month and we'd originally timed it to coordinate with the event and we left those dates pretty much intact um, we're going to feature a lot of the artists. Uh, I'm going to, I'm working on, we're setting this up for a split screen here on Facebook live where I can interview the artists here live on Facebook, talking about their art. Uh, I believe the artwork is still in their studio because it, you can't really have a gathering. So why bring it to the, to the gallery in Cottonwood Falls? So I'm hoping to get the artists with their artwork in the event, uh, talk to them about their inspiration, you know, their history, their other things that they're excited about. So that's a pretty cool thing coming up that's starting on Monday. Um, I think that's kind of it. You know, we've had a lot of crazy things going on. We're, we're, we're doing our best to keep plodding along. Our next auction online is another King collection, King Estate piece. It's their silver collection. Amy's working on that at home. Uh, we brought all the silver to her, the camera, photography equipment. Um, of course, she has a laptop. She's working from home. She's cataloging that auction by herself which takes a long time. She's got to take all the pictures, take all the measurements, make all the weights, research the, the silversmiths. There's about a hundred lots of coin silver, uh, Missouri coin silver. I saw Kentucky pieces already and I didn't look that closely at it. Um, there's some Tiffany Sterling flatware. There's several European and Danish pieces as well. So there's a lot of research to be done. And usually with two of us, we could get through that auction in four or five days from start to finish. Um, but with us working separate locations and learning all these new tools that we've implemented this last that month, uh, it's taking a little bit longer. So we expect that to be ready, hopefully mid to late next week um, and are excited about it. There's some really neat pieces and makers that you just don't see regularly. So excited to have that happen. Other than that, I think we're, uh, we're in the same boat as everybody else, doing the best we can to stay home, stay safe um, on a regular basis. Um, we're not uh, doing the things that we're not supposed to be doing. Uh, and of course, my office is my office. This is, you know, I'm the only one here um, working on what I can, except for pickup. And again, that was all uh, curbside as much as we could. So thank you all so much for watching. If you have any questions, please go ahead and post them here. Uh, I think we're going to actually change the name of this going forward. Uh, I think the Behind the Gavel with Jason is going to go to my BTG, my Behind the Gavel page. That's going to focus more on the business aspects of the auction and just business in general. And then we're going to probably like Casey Auction Minute, the Casey Auction Update, uh, where we'll do things like we talk about auctions we have coming up and listing. We're also going to talk about items in particular. I think most people, looking back over our video uh, viewership, um, when we have actual antiques and art and frames and whatever else, uh, there seems to be a lot more interest for that on this page. And so that's kind of what we're going to focus that on. We're going to change things up a little bit and uh, see if we can't give you more of what you really want to see here on a regular basis. It may not be scheduled every week either. Uh, we might do three in one week. We might do one every three weeks. It just depends on what's going on. So uh, still excited about doing it. If you have any questions, you can always post them here. If you're watching this on YouTube, post a comment below. Or you can always give us a phone call at 816-283-3633 or drop us an email, info at kcauctioncompany.com. Info at letter K, letter C, auction and company is spelled out.com we answer those as quickly as we can private messages always work also on instagram all the time so there's all kinds of ways to get a hold of us share this with your friends let them know what's going on um and uh hopefully you guys are and strong where you're at otherwise have a great day uh looking forward to summer kind of getting here and staying for a while thanks and we'll talk to you soon